Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autogafool. Well, electric cars are certainly not a new thing, but we're here in Dresden today with Volkswagen to find out what the future might hold for them. Behind me, you can see some production happening. Now, this plant in Dresden was made famous for its production of the Phaeton, but all of that changed in 2017 when it took over the production of the e-Golf. Well, that's the e-Golf as it exists today, but we're going to be hearing a little bit more about what Volkswagen plan to do with electric cars in the future. The Volkswagen factory here in Dresden is one of the shiniest, cleanest, most, I would say, decorous car manufacturing plants you could ever wish to go through. And it doesn't take long of looking around it to understand why. They really do believe that electric is the future and the care they put into the presentation of the cars here really shows you how much importance they place on that. Now here we have a fully stripped out e-Golf and it really demonstrates what we've come here to look at today. In order to make the first e-Golfs, what we did is we took the gas platform for the Golf and we simply translated that into an electric platform. Now clearly that makes the car do some things structurally and architecturally that are less than ideal or suboptimal. In terms of the battery spacing and holds, going to take a, a bit of a closer look at that in just a moment. We have to compromise our way around the way in which the car is built. Now, I'm sure regular viewers will be more than familiar with our talking about the MQB or the Modular Transverse Matrix. This was a platform designed by Volkswagen to be used right across the group. And to say it is popular is probably a pretty big understatement. It's huge advantages to be able to take the same basis and utilize this for lots of different cars. It's much more efficient, it brings economies of scale, it makes production development much faster, and for a customer it means you get much more interior space because the whole platform is much better used. Well, today we're very excited to be able to talk about the MEB. This will be Volkswagen's multi-use basis for their electric platforms and that means that finally those batteries will have a fully designed home to sit in right across the group. Best way of describing it is it looks a little bit like a stripped down skateboard but I think we can show you better by taking a closer look. So here we have it the MEB the first custom built platform for multi-car use for fully electric vehicles. Well, I'm no engineer, but it doesn't take a huge amount of looking at this platform to immediately see the benefit gained by having something that has been specifically designed for purely electric power. Look at the way that the battery compartment has been integrated into the chassis of that vehicle. What does that mean? Well, two really key things. First of all, the weight distribution on this platform will be equal, and that results in a much more familiar drive for the car, but also because it's built directly and intentionally straight into the chassis it doesn't have the impact that we're so used to on the interior space of this vehicle that we've experienced so much in previous electric cars so Volkswagen say for example that they will not bring any electric car to market that doesn't have equal to or greater than capacity than its non-electric counterpart well that's quite some claim I think this really nicely visually communicates the power of having a custom-built platform if you've ever looked inside the engine bay of an e-golf and we may have showed you a little cutaway of one slightly earlier on you will see how the engine bay just clearly is designed not for the engine that's in it this new platform integrates beautifully the way that electric engines are set up to function optimally look at the way this radiator grille is displayed very very different to what you would expect on a standard combustion engine and inside when we look at the components they look as if they belong in this space. It's not an adaption, it is custom built, and it looks really, really exciting. So I was honest with you earlier when I said I was not an engineer, and therefore there is a lot more happening here than I can fairly explain. Well, I found us an expert, and hopefully he's gonna allow us to understand more about what's happening here. Sir, please introduce yourself for our viewers. Yeah, hello, my, from my side, I'm David Holbein. I'm the project manager from MEB, from the Volkswagen uh, car company, and responsible for the general project MEB, so for the Volkswagen group, um, for all brands, so to say. 
I think we found the right guy to talk to. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I have to start by saying I am genuinely excited to see this. We've waited an awfully long time to be able to see cars that are built from the ground up solely for the purpose of providing purely electric drive. And with this being a modular system, hopefully that's going to have a very positive impact on pricing. But we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Yeah. Please introduce us to your platform and tell us what the thinking is here. Okay, should I take it? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, I introduced it uh, sometime earlier today. We made this platform completely for the electric drive system, but of course, in general, for the customer. So we, we try to fit in both the battery and the customer. And we, we, intro we introduced the battery matrix system that is also flexible concerning range and developed the car around the battery with a rear wheel drive system and with a lot of other USPs that uh, so far are not available in the main uh, market, so to say, and not only especially for electric cars, but also for the main, the main customer generally. Now, rear-wheel drive, is that primarily for weight distribution because we have so much weight with the batteries in the middle? Uh, it's because we wanted to have better driving performance uh, during slippery roads and so on. And if you have the rear-wheel drive systems, it, you can uh, trans transport, so to say, more power to the wheel, even if you, if you have a bit slippery road, but it's better than the front-wheel drive system. So that's why we decided if we go on 50-50% distribution, what the result is today, we definitely should go on rear-wheel drive system to have you know, more fun to drive them. Excellent. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Now, if you keep up with electric car news, you'll be aware that heat management of battery systems is a very topical issue. And one of the things that visually immediately strikes me about this design is we have a lot of battery yeah. in a very compact area. Yeah. What has been achieved with this design in order to manage thermal management of the system? Yeah, the, all battery systems will have a, a liquid cooling and liquid uh, heating system so that we have the, the thermal management uh, you know fixed in all usage areas cold and hot weather conditions and we're this, what's special about this system is that the, the cooling liquid is not inside the battery just but just from the lower side so that even if there is some kind of failure what we don't expect but there won't be any water at any time in the system so that's really new and not uh, on the market anywhere so far wow that sounds awesome now um Obviously, battery technology moves a lot faster than yeah. platform uh, technology does largely because of production. Yeah. Are we going to have the possibility to change the battery platform within this car as that technology improves? Uh, what we plan is to integrate more, uh, you know, co suppliers concerning battery cells, and also then introduce, you know, future developments concerning higher capacity of cells. Generally, the, the battery is, of course, uh, you know, changeable in terms of uh, maintenance or any kind of uh, topic we have to fix. But generally, it's not planned to. Uh, you have this swapping uh, system. Uh, between the batteries because this battery lasts longer than every normal car life and in future when there will be more improvements concerning energy density we will will be able to introduce this in the existing battery you know logic so exchange module sorry exchange modules but still have the same battery system now, I want to take a look with you just round at the front because I was just showing our viewers here and for me, this really does serve to demonstrate excellently the difference in designing a system to take a purely electric drivetrain rather than configuring one that's been designed for gasoline. Yeah. Can you please talk me through how you prioritize utilizing this space? Yeah, um, the, this big black box you see here in the middle is part of the, uh, the AC, the, the heating and cooling system from the car. Normally you find one of those things in the front, it's normally always in the car. So that was also one solution to have more interior space, but putting this thing then in the, in the front uh, area. And then you see the 12 volt battery, which is still necessary, even though we have this high voltage system, but you know, to do all the security stuff and um, you know, watch over the battery from the outside. So there's a 12 volt security level and all the 12 volt system and running on this, you know, backup battery, so to say. And then we have a lot of other things to see here inside. I don't, I'm not sure if you want to go in, in detail. We have the, the climate compressor here and also the, the heating function, like I said, for the battery. And what every car also has a steering, <laughs> it's in here. And all the things you also, um, think about when you have a combustion engine like the cooler some people think that you don't need cooling devices anymore in electric cars but it's not true so we have two 
one for the, the climate system for the interior and also for the, uh, the drive terrain itself because even though if it's an electric drive it has some uh, thermal losses and they have to get out of the car so to say. It's funny for me because it's a little bit emotional. You're so used to right throughout being a young guy with your first car, popping up the lid and having a look in, and you broadly speaking know what everything is and what it does. Yeah. And I can't help but wonder, is this the first time that we're looking at an electric engine that will become the standard for what we see and how we relate to this in the future? It's really quite exciting, but I'm pleased to see a little bit of the past still remains. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm gonna come around here to ask you the burning question. Yeah. There are two standard criticisms, well, there are a few standard criticisms. People have electric cars, but two of the big ones are one, range anxiety. Now, I'm going to knock that one away immediately because we say we hope we're going to be looking at around about the 550 kilometer range. But the second one is cost of ownership over lifetime. Yeah. The introduction of a modular platform should allow us to bring down pricing on cars. Yeah. Will it? bring down the pricing to where it is really, truly comparable with its fossil fuel alternatives? Uh, generally saying yes. So there will be a price tag about uh, more or less equal, uh, equally to a diesel uh, driven car in the same segment. So that's our, that's our main goal to achieve with the MEB. In every segment we offer cars then based on it. That is a really, really big deal. So I think the idea then will be that in principle, the decision you have to make as a customer is which drivetrain you want. The cost will be the same. It's just up to you what you want to go with. That's pretty exciting news. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. It's really been a pleasure. Thank we you. can't wait to give one a drive. Yeah, next time. <laughs> now we come to the beating heart of the MEB, the batteries themselves. And I found myself somebody who knows enough to be able to explain them to me. Sir, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, I would like to. My name is Michael Thiel, and I'm head of the development of battery system at Volkswagen Braunschweig and production planning. Now, the first thing to say about the way that these things integrate is that the change of architecture and the change of the way these things are used, or we heard today, we might be experiencing electric ranges soon in the order of about 550 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Could that really be true? Yes, that will be true in a, within the next year. It will become reality. And this was possible um, since we made a special platform for electric vehicles. And therefore, one of uh, the main points uh, to achieve this goal is that we first designed a battery system and built a car around it. And if you have a look at this battery system, it's uh, built up very easy in its structure. <laughs> it's rectangular if you want so. And this allows us uh, to put the met maximum energy content within the system. So, I'm going to ask a, a pretty basic question because there's some very technical stuff going on here. My understanding with battery construction is that batteries, just like people, like to charge slowly. Is this correct? But the market is demanding ever more faster charging solutions. So how do we optimize the benefit between treating our batteries so we get the best from them and satisfying the customer so they get the fastest possible charge? Mm -hmm. Of course, I understand that the customer wants to, uh, to reach uh, small charging times. Now, for example, if he does uh, long distance travels and therefore um, it's understandable that we have the requirement for coming down with the charging times and to achieve this if you have a look on the inside of the system every cell module which is mounted within the battery system has a cooling plate underneath and this enables us uh, to cool the cells during charging uh, to cool them down and to keep them in the right temperature and this allows us on the other way to uh, recharge a battery system with a 100 kilowatt charger within 30 minutes uh, the battery uh, on 80 percent of its energy content and this uh, values is um, can be even more improved and this depends on the chemistry which you use on the cells installed in the battery system. Of course, it's always, you have to look, as we have said, we like to go into mass production. We also have to look not only for the technical things but as well on the costs and so we found the, the optimum from our side for re realizing the MEB battery system. 
Well, now that answers my question about how we were going to deal with the thermal management issues within the context of this. It's really a very impressive total unit, and clearly an awful lot of design and work has gone into this. Is it going to be changeable? What, the reason I ask that is that battery technology comes on at such an extraordinary pace, and clearly if you buy a car, you're not looking at it only for one or two years. You want this to have a long life. Now we have the modular system. Will I be able to have this by the manufacturer changed over for a newer system if it becomes available? Yeah, this is actually not planned, but as we know and as I've shown it in my presentation, at the moment the energy content constantly raises, as you just said, year by year. And so it's understandable that the customer wants to achieve more density and longer driving distances. And what I can say is, um, Basically, it's possible to change the battery system, but you have to further adaption from the car side for the battery management and so on. And uh, so it's, uh, uh, you can, we can think about it in the future. Yeah. Okay, so let's ask about inductive charging. Is that going to be possible with this battery? Yes, that's possible with the battery. And um, we have always reserved uh, space within the front of the car for an inductive uh, charging plate so it may be an option for the future to do the inductive charging with this car and battery system as well. So there you go Thomas, there's no need to worry about having your house community organize some fast charging cables, you need inductive, that's the solution. Maybe a lot of uh, phone ones all together would solve your problem. <laughs> now. I need to ask you about sustainability. One of the criticisms of batteries for the longest time is the way in which they're produced and how they are disposed of when they reach the end of their life cycle. Mm -hmm. What have Volkswagen done in order to make sure this is a sustainable platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, we are looking for sustainable points and this uh, begins with our suppliers and they have to fulfill certain requirements for, for example, for the labor conditions when the people get the raw materials from the mines and therefore, of course, we wouldn't accept any uh, children's work and so on and these are points which we already consider. Then we uh, put this material in the cells, of course, for example, use it within the car and after uh, the car's life, well, the car come to, comes to its life end, um, when the driving distance may come down, it's even thinkable that uh, we have a second use for the battery system. You have to imagine that you take several battery systems of this type, put them together, and so you can build up even as the energy density comes down or has come down. Uh, you can use by the um, large amount of battery systems as a large energy storage and so you have a second life and can use them longer. Well, that's really good to hear. So if we take a battery system like this, how long would we expect this to work within average usage on a car? And then what is its long-term potential within a secondary function, like an energy sink for, say, a, a house or a community, something like this? Mm -hmm. uh, what I can tell you is that Volkswagen guarantees actually a lifetime of uh, eight years or 160,000 kilometers driving distance. And of course, the battery system won't fail down after this time. It lo loses, uh, because of the chemistry, um, energy content, mm -hmm. this for sure. But this enables the customer to drive even longer with the car. And um, But I can tell you an absolute value how long, whether they will last 15 or 20 years. This depends on the behavior of the charging times, of uh, the acceleration during the car's use, but uh, you can be sure it will last even more than the eight years which are guaranteed at basic. Well, that sounds pretty exciting to me, and I only have to ask uh, that there will not be the same experiences with some uh, phone manufacturers whereby we find the battery works great until the new model comes out. But I'm sure that won't happen with the cars. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. It really has been great, and we can't wait to be able to give them a test on the road. Two extra quick notes on the battery. The eight-year, 160,000-kilometer guarantee on the battery relates to the current generation of e-Golf. So hopefully with the MEB platform, 
that guarantee will get longer. And with the prices coming down, that makes for a very attractive option. Now, in terms of the changeability of the batteries, I think it's fair to point out that although it may be technically possible to change the batteries out of an existing car that you bought for newer, more advanced batteries, it's likely that that will be cost prohibitive. What's so exciting about the MEB as a platform is that it's modular. That means as newer batteries become available and newer models come out, so model refreshes or complete revisions, then we will be able to use the same architecture to feature the new technology that's likely to mean a change in software, a change in some hardware, and a change in the cables used. So this is future-proof, but in terms of an individual car, you're still going to be asking the same questions you're asking now every time a new model comes out. Do I need to make a change just yet, or should I wait just a little bit longer? We've also had the opportunity today to learn a little bit more about Ionity. Now, that's going to be a joint venture between BMW, Daimler, Ford, and, of course, Volkswagen. Its aim is to create the largest charging network in Europe. But is that going to answer any of our anxieties? We'll have to wait and see. I think range anxiety is actually not that bad if you manage it carefully, but I tell you what I find absolutely insane making, and that's turning up at a charging station to find it isn't operable, it connects to one of 15 different apps, it won't accept my credit card details when I try and put them in, or there's a guy with a much bigger car parking it up, taking all of that energy for too long. Hopefully, this is going to address a lot of those issues. But you know what, I do have to ask you, why is it that the largest charging network in Europe will not cater to the best-selling electric vehicle, the LEAF? Well, I don't know. Sadly, we're not going to be able to answer that for you today, but hopefully we'll be finding out soon enough. If you've ever been to Dresden or Wolfsburg, you'll be more than familiar with what I'm standing next to. This is absolutely chock full from floor to ceiling with brand new electric cars ready to be delivered or be collected. Well, if you're wondering how long you'll have to wait before you can actually buy a new MEB car, the target time is 2020, but you will be able to pre-order them from 2019. Now, are they actually going to manage to get as many cars in our hands as they would like? Well, they're telling us by 2025, they'll be selling a million units per year. And that represents a tenfold increase on what they're currently doing. Does that sound ambitious to you? Well, last year alone, 2017, saw a 65% increase in the number of electric cars sold globally. So I think there's a good reason to have that sort of a positive attitude. Don't forget, the new cars are due to come with less range anxiety, with 550 kilometer ranges or thereabouts, and 30 minute charge times to about 80% of full on the battery. I think that's going to take away a lot of people's reasons not to buy one. And if they really can bring that pricing down so it genuinely reflects the same pricing that we've come to know and enjoy with petrol engines, I think we just might be looking at the future of Volkswagen. Well, it would be rude of us to come all the way to Dresden without saying hello to our old friend, the IDR Pikes Peak. Now, if you haven't seen our coverage of that, I encourage you to go and check out our special on Goodwood, where we got to meet Romain Dumas and see the car in action. Well, it is nice to see it here all cleaned up and looking beautiful for the camera, but I must admit, there's still a little bit of me that misses the gaffer tape that they put over the top of these air intakes. Well, it's a very fitting place to talk about electricity because this clearly is the future of where we're going to. This is now the world record holder for the fastest ascent of Pikes Peak. And if you talk to Volkswagen, they are big fans of putting it across that electricity is the future of vehicles and therefore they are very committed to seeing what they can achieve to make sure we're all driving one as soon as possible. Well, I don't know about that. They might have a little bit of convincing to do of Thomas. I mean, after all, there's still a little bit of legs left in the gasoline engine, but it really is quite exciting to see just what will be possible with electric drives in the future.